All right, we're doing a reenactment of Happy Endings by Margaret Atwood. This is Mary, John, eyes. Matt, <laughs> James, <laughs> and Fred. <laughs> okay, John and Mary meet. What happens next? If you want a happy ending, try A. A. John and Mary fall in love. They get married. They both have worthwhile and and fun jobs, which they find stimulating and challenging. They buy a charming house. Real estate values go up. Eventually, when they can afford living help, they have two children. <laughs> to whom they are devoted. The children turn out well. John and Mary have a stimulating and challenging sex life and work well friends. <laughs> they go on fun vacations together. They retire. They both have hobbies which they find stimulating and challenging. Eventually they die. This is the end of the story. Uh, B. Mary falls in love with John, but John doesn't fall in love with Mary. <laughs> he merely uses her body for selfish pleasures and ego gratification of intended kinds. He comes to her apartment twice a week and she cooks him dinner. You'll notice that he doesn't even consider her worth the price of dinner out. And after he's eaten the dinner, he fucks her and after that he falls asleep while she does the dishes. So, he doesn't think she's in hiding. Uh, she puts on fresh lipstick so she'll look good when he wakes up, but when he wakes up, he doesn't even notice. He puts on his socks, and his shorts, and his pants, and his shirt, and his tie, and his shoes, the reverse order from the one in which he took them off. He doesn't take off Mary's clothes, she takes them off herself. She acts as if she's dying for it every time, not because she likes sex exactly, she doesn't. But she wants John to think she does, because if they do it often enough, surely he'll get used to her, he'll come to depend on her, and they will get married. <laughs> <laughs> but John goes out the door with hardly so much as a good night, and three days later he turns up at 6 o'clock and they do the whole thing over again. Mary gets run down, crying is bad for your face, everyone knows that, and so does Mary, but she can't stop. People at work notice, her friends tell her John is a rat, a pig, a dog, he isn't good enough for her, but she can't believe it. Inside John, and she thinks is another John who is much nicer. This other John will emerge like a butterfly from a cocoon, a jack from a box, a pit from a prune, if the first John is only squeezed enough. One evening, John complains about the food. He has never complained about the food before. Mary is right. <laughs> Her friends tell her that they've seen him in a restaurant with another woman whose name is Madge. It's not even Madge that finally gets to Mary, it's the restaurant. John has never taken Mary to a restaurant. Mary collects all the sleeping pills and aspirin she can find and takes them in a half bottle of sherry. You can see what kind of woman she is by the fact that it's not even whiskey. She leaves it up for John. <laughs> Of 
course, he can't leave his wife because a commitment is a commitment. He goes on about this more than is necessary, and Mary finds it boring. <clears throat> but older men can keep it up longer, so on the whole, she has a fairly good time. One day, James freezes in on his motorcycle. <laughs> It's a top grade California hybrid, and James and Mary get higher than the possible, and they climb to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Every, everything becomes very in the water, but along comes John, who has a key to Mary's apartment. Uh, he finds them stoned and entwined. He's overcome with despair. Finally, he's middle aged for two years. He'll be bald as an egg, and he can't stand it. He purchases a handgun. Saying he needs it for target practice, this is a thin part of the plot, but it can be dealt with later, and shoots the two of them and himself. Alright, <clears throat> shot himself. Madge, after a single period of mourning, <laughs> Mary is an understanding man called Fred, and everything continues as an A, but under different names. Uh, scenario D Fred and Madge have no problems. They get along exceptionally well and are good at working out any little difficulties that may arise, but their charming house is by the seashore. And one day, a giant tidal wave approaches. Real estate values go down. The rest of the story is about how is about what caused the tidal wave and how they escape from it. They do, though thousands drown, but Fred and Madge are virtuous and lucky. Finally on high ground, they clasp each other, wet and dripping. Grateful and continues as an A. Yes, but Fred has a bad heart. The rest of the story is about how kind and understanding they both are until Fred dies. Then Madge devotes herself to charity work until the end of A. If you like it, Madge can be cancer. It can be Madge, cancer, guilty, confused, and bird watching. Scenario F. If you think this is all too bourgeois, make John revolutionary. <laughs> and Mary, a counter espionage agent. Let's see how far that gets you. Remember, this is Canada. You'll still end up with A, though in between you may get a lustful brawling saga, a passionate movement, a chronicle of our times. You'll have to face it. The endings are the same, however you slice it. Don't be deluded by any other endings. They're all fake. Either del deliberately fake, with malicious intent to deceive, or just motivated by excessive optimism, if not by downright sentimentality. The only authentic ending is right here, John Mary die, John Mary die, John and Mary die. <laughs> so much for endings, beginnings are always more fun. True connoisseurs, however, are known to favor the stretch in between, since it's the hardest to do anything with. That's about all that can be said for plots, which anyways are just one thing after another, a what and a what and a what. Now try how.